Welcome back to Nintendo K channel. I am Danny. Uh, we just got back from too many games in Pennsylvania. We were really excited to be there. Every year is like a pilgrimage to uh, all the fans, uh, you know, getting all those retro games. And you know, I've been kind of slacking on collecting the retro games. I got a lot of Nintendo Switch, so I, you know, time to beef it up. There are a lot of titles that I always wanted but wanted to find a good deal. And the great thing about, you know, going to retro game conventions like uh, Too Many Games is the fact that you can actually see the vendor, see the games itself in person, and check them out, see what's missing. Maybe something that uh, you never have to see if you were buy on eBay or online stores and whatnot. So it's a great way to kind of interact with the community and also see everything that, you know, all fans coming together, just having fun. Uh, I got to meet a lot of cool uh, fellow content creators while I was there. Uh, Eva and I had a, lot, a blast just talking, meeting up with them, and just talking about video games. That's the great thing about this community. Uh, but uh, yeah, I do encourage you guys to just check out your local uh, game, video game uh, conventions that's around you. Check it out. Maybe you'll find some hidden treasures. And you know, feel free to share it with me in social media. I really like to see what you guys get. I got a lot of games, so um, and I was quite surprised because I wasn't going in there uh, expecting to find anything. I was going with that expectation. Um, I found a combination of uh, two, two different types of things you'll see in a moment, but uh, I'm going to go right up to the modern, I guess, and then all the way down to the uh, retro uh, you know, stuff of the old days. All right, so first things first, I got this game here, and I, I really was into uh, getting uh, you know shooters I don't know why and and the thing about being getting shooters is uh, you know I just want to get in and play quick fast-paced uh, gameplay and just have fun with it this is Danmaku Unlimited 3 for Nintendo Switch I know it's not a retro game but I thought you know what I love bullet hell shooters or shmups or shoot em ups whatever way you want to call it um, this is one from limit one game so uh, unfortunately you know I missed the run on this game and if you guys don't know, Limit Run, if you don't pre-order it in time, once they you know finish their uh, pre-orders, that's it. You'll never really see it again. Um, unfortunately, they were at too many games, so I said, you know what? I gotta pick it up. It's part of my collection, and it's a bullet hell shooter. Why not, right? This is this is a fast-paced uh, you know shmup game. I gotta play. A big thing I just saw when I was there is these players, guys. I saw so many of them, and this is definitely one of them. Sword of Man is a really classic RPG. I remember uh, playing uh, Secret of Man on the Super Nintendo. You know what? I said, I got this game in the collection. I never got a chance to play it. I actually have it in my collection. I said, you know what? Get the player's guide. I, I tend to not use them, but after I finish the game, I said, you know what? After I do all, all that needs to be done in the game, I said, I'll go look back in the manual, look at the artwork, maybe look at things I might have missed. And this is definitely one, you know, it's a really nice game that I heard a lot of things about. And of course, with the Trials of Mana that they released, uh, you know, announced earlier uh, for Nintendo Switch, this is a great way to go back into classics, right? So this is the Sword of Mana for the Game Boy Advance, a player's guide that I was really, really uh, excited to see. Um, and again, I was on a table. I was like, oh, Evelyn helped me find a bunch of them. This was Jet Force Gemini for the Nintendo 64. Um, this is a classic game that I play with my friend a lot, uh, going to his house. And it's a really fun rareware game from N64 era. Um, it's not very well known, or I guess to say, not as popular as like Banjo Kazooie or GoldenEye for Nintendo 64. But I had a blast, and you know what? This is a throwback of that era. If you guys played this game back in the day, you enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments. I'm really interested to hear what you have to say about this. So yeah, this is uh, Jet Force Gemini. Uh, what nothing you notice? A lot of the players that you're gonna see is an era with the uh, Nintendo Power making. Uh, these guides. So I'm a big fan of Nintendo Power. I have the whole collection and you know what? This is part of that uh, big entourage collection I got for the uh, no, magazines. The next one is kind of uh, got me interested because of the Nintendo Direct. They announced uh, a Final Fantasy game and this is uh, when a time when on uh, during the GameCube when Fa Square uh, Enix or uh, Square I should say Squaresoft at the time wasn't really making the mainline games for Nintendo platforms. If you guys know what I mean by that, this is Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. And the funny thing is they actually going to be uh, bringing this to Nintendo Switch. So to have a player's guide for it, because they're not going to make a player's guide, um, you know, for this game for Nintendo Switch anymore, because a lot of the manufacturers have gone, like Prima Games. So you know what, you can still use this guide for the Nintendo Switch game if you wish to do so. Um, this is a really fantastic game. I remember the, uh, the, the obstacle you have to go to play this game. You have to get 
uh, Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Advance ST, you get the uh, Game Boy Advance Link Cable and you connect it to the GameCube. So, you know, unless you have friends that have all that uh, requirement, you won't be able to play it, uh, you know, four player or, t or less, uh, you know, multiplayer in this game. So, I know it was a big hurdle. I, I got like maybe one or two friends with me to play at that time because of the requirement. But, you know, when it comes to the Switch, you know, you can check this out. It'll be very helpful. The next one, I'm a big Final Fantasy fan, um, and uh, this one is uh, um, one of my favorites. It's actually not many people mention about it, but I said, you know what, I have the game in my collection. Yeah, I saw a player's guide there. Why not? This is Final Fantasy V Advance. So a, a very classic, uh, you know, Square Enix game. And uh, I do have fond memories of playing this. So you know what, pick up a player's guide. It's pretty thick. Uh, what's great about it, I'm just gonna flip it through very quickly. You just see like, it's very in-depth, a lot of um, artwork maps and diagrams you name it and it's uh, could be quite helpful especially for an rpg now we go into the more fun exciting nintendo themed games and this is mario and luigi partners in time for nintendo ds uh you know the funny thing i play most of the mario and luigi games this one i haven't got a chance to play all them at all actually so i'm looking forward to maybe pop it in in my old system for nintendo ds and play this classic. If you guys play this game, let me know. Let me know what you think about it. I'm interested to hear. This is going to be a fun one. This one here, I, I'm sure most of you guys play, but I couldn't resist. This is a very colorful guide. Uh, this is new Super Mario Brothers, the original for Nintendo DS. Um, look at that. It's really colorful. The book is is actually really, really nice. Well done. The whole the whole level is laid out. You can see a lot of uh, diagrams, the maps again. Um, very in full color. This is what I love about Players Guide. You can just flip it out and get what you need to do uh, right away. This is uh, really exciting. All right, this is uh, one of my favorite games of all time, especially for the NES. But it was ported to a portable system, and you guys know this is a uh, Super Mario Advance Four, Super Mario Bros. Three. Now I have played Super Mario Bros. Three on the NES. I actually done it on live stream as well. Um, I had a blast playing with it. You guys know the, all the power-ups, the levels, um, a lot of fun. This is actually a really, really great game. People consider this one of the greatest games of all time for Mario games. Then this is definitely one of them. I love this one. I had to grab this one. Now, you know, ending off the player's guide, I did need some uh, magazines to complete my Nintendo Power Magazine in terms of uh, upgrading it because there were some issues that were not in the greatest shape. So I said, you know, I, if I find it great, if not, it's okay. But I was lucky enough to found it. Evelyn and her brother helped me out. Uh, they found this is particular one issue. Everything else I got, I just needed this one issue. And this is the Nintendo Power Magazine issue 201. And this is with the Chibi Robo on the front cover. This is all I need. It's complete. This actually has the, uh, I guess, with the uh, all the inserts and nothing ripped out. So it was in great shape, good price. And now I'm very satisfied. I have the entire set in great shape and the entire Nintendo Power Magazine. So that's one for the books. Now this one here I found and um, it's also another one that, that I need to replace. And this is a very classic issue. And many of you guys remember if you uh, subscribed to Nintendo Power back in the days. Uh, it's a really gorgeous uh, cover as well. This is uh, the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening uh, premiere issue for Nintendo Power. This is issue 50. You know, this is a really mint condition uh, copy. Only difference is the only bad thing is that it has a little written volume 50. I don't know why they did that, but other than that, inside is phenomenal. I just want to give you guys a quick look at this. 50 issues. They have a poster in there. Look at that. It's really, really nice to have that in there. And what's neat is also they have a little, uh, I guess, a fold out with the uh, tattoos in there. You have the logo of uh, you know, The Legend of Zelda and Yoshi right there just to give you guys some giggles. So I don't know if I want to put the tattoos on myself. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, and the last thing I want to show you guys, this is the fold out, I should say, the, the uh, cover for uh, Link's Awakening. So I'm really excited for the release for Nintendo Switch. And look at that, guys. This, I'm, I, I mean, the graphics may be different, but I'm sure the gameplay can be still be you. You know, if you play the original game, you can still apply to it in somewhat because it should be essentially the same gameplay right and they have the whole map there just to give you guys a look at that that looks i think phenomenal so there you go that's the nintendo power though now we're gonna get to the classic games first one is for the nintendo gamecube this is not something 
most people are, you know, obviously look at. Uh, I have most of the games that I need for the GameCube, and this is Pac-Man Versus. What is interesting about this one is you're like, hmm, what's so what's so great about? It? Why did you pick it up? Because Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator of Mario, Zelda, Pikmin, and all the various Nintendo franchises that uh, we all grew and love, he created this game. So uh, this is a really interesting one that also looking back like Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Many people did not look at this title because you needed the Game Boy Advance, you need the cable to get into the GameCube, and that's how you play this game multiplayer. You can play as Pac-Man or the Ghost themselves. Um, it's quite fun actually. I got to try this out back in the day. We again we needed all the requirements to play, but you know if you do have it, pretty neat to play. So this is one for the game, and also it's brand new factory sealed, so I couldn't resist, and it's going to the GameCube collection. The next one, kind of hawking back to my uh, craving for shooters. I, I don't know why, and then when I went into too many games, like, you know what, I, I, I just saw it right there. And all the games I'm going to show you are complete in box, uh, has a manual, has the precautions, uh, uh, packaging, insert, everything, you name it. Uh, just like you were buying the game first time, obviously it's not sealed. Uh, this one here is Earth Defense Force for the Super Nintendo. Uh, this is a really interesting one. This is a horizontal shooter. And I never played this one uh, before. I heard a lot of things about my friends. and said, you know what, this is a lot of fun. If you can get it for a good price, which I did. Uh, the vendor was uh, willing to help me get actually all the games you're gonna see uh, from the same person. And you know, I packed it up. I, I said, you know, can you give me a good deal? He actually did. So, you know, he increased it a bit. Um, yeah, this is one for it, Earth Defense Force uh, for the Super Nintendo. I, you know, it's a beautiful copy, very, very minty actually. The box is in great shape. The next one is, again, for a shooter. Super R-Type. I played the original R-Type in the arcades uh, again, um, and you know, I never played this one. I said, you, you know, give it a shot. Uh, it looks kind of cool, so I said, you know what, let's give it a go and have some fun with this. I love the artwork, so you can look at that. So. And then of course, if you guys play sh uh, shooters, you know R-Type. It's uh, one of the well-known shooters out there. The next one is not a shooter, but if you watch the cartoon series Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles back in the 90s, um, and you know you grew up in that type of cartoon era, um, you probably understand that. And I love the arcade games for it. And also there's various you know variations like Super Nintendo, NES games uh, in that same vein. But this is you know is not the, that type, I should say. It's a fighter based on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. This is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles tournament fighters for the Super Nintendo. The game is not the greatest, I know that for sure, but it's a uh, it's something I needed for the collection and I always wanted it. I couldn't find it a good price and again, the complete in box. I, I said, hey, you know what? I got a, I saw it there with this half shrink wrap still on. You can see, and so it's, you could tell, you know, this person probably just opened up, played it, and, and certainly so. When I checked it, they had everything in there. The cartridge was like perfect shape, the, the map, even the, uh, uh, how would I say, not the map, it's the poster. And with that, I was like, hey, I gotta grab it. You know, I've been looking for this for a long time. The Tournament Fighters, the Super Nintendo. The last one is the oldest game of the bunch. And this one, it's not very rare by any means. It's something that I haven't found complete and the way I, I you know, have a set of standard in collecting games. And uh, I, again, I played a lot, a heck out of this. This is a co little co-op with my friend. Maybe perhaps I play with Evelyn as well. Uh, this is a classic. This is Double Dragon 2, the revenge for the NES. Um, beautiful, beautiful copy. The box is just in immaculate condition. I said, you know, uh, not often do I see this. Uh, I see a lot in, you know, just the cartridge, but if you guys realize by now, I like to collect all my games complete in box. And so I could put it on the shelf. Uh, I know what I'm looking at. I could pull it out and, and play it. It's, uh, that's just the way I like to collect my games. But you know, you can, guys can collect uh, even just the cartridge alone if you wish to do so. But I say keep it consistent. And I've been consistent on just collecting the box game. If I can't find it in good shape, I'll just pass on. I'll be patient about it. And Double Dragon 2, the longest time ever, I could not find it uh, until too many games this year in 2019. So there you go. These are all the pickups I got for too many games this year. Um, I'm really excited uh, every year to go because you don't know what to expect when you uh, be there. And again, it was so much fun. You see a lot of fans there. You see a lot of content creators. Uh, you see the vendors. You get to check them out, uh, speak to them, and maybe they'll tell you their recommendations sometimes. They have their own uh, personality, and I'm sure you guys have your own uh, thoughts and uh, 
what games you like to play. So leave me down below in the comments what are your thoughts on my pickups? Uh, what are you interested in getting in your collection? How you collect? Whichever the case is, I'm always interested to hear what you have to say. If you enjoyed this episode, I appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe to Intendicate, that's always helpful. And we'll catch you again in the next episode.